In this video, we're going to be going over a fairly basic use case, but it's something that I had not covered uh, before on its own, so I figured it would be a good idea to go ahead and make a quick video to show you how to do this. We're going to be showing how to upload images and download them into your front-end application, and the framework that I'm going to be working with today is React, but the general idea should be able to be used um, across any JavaScript framework, including Vue, Svelte, Angular, or anything else that you're working with. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get started by creating a new React application. And I'm going to call this, you know, Upload Images S3 because we're going to be working with the storage category of Amplify and it's backed by Amazon S3. So the idea here is that we want to show you how to upload an image to S3, download an image from S3, and render it to your user interface. All right, so once the project has been created, we'll go ahead and up, uh, change into the new directory of Upload Images S3. And then we're going to go ahead and install AWS Amplify. And then we're going to go ahead and initialize a new Amplify project by running Amplify init. I'm going to kind of just take all of the defaults here because I'm working in a React app. It's going to automatically detect most of these settings. Only thing that I'm kind of choosing is the environment name and Visual Studio Code as my text editor. Okay, once our um, Amplify project has been created, we should be able to see our Amplify folder and our AWS exports and our SRC folder. So we know we're good to go. Next, let's go ahead and run Amplify add storage. Whoops. And here we're going to choose content. And then Amplify storage uses Amazon S3 under the hood, which needs some type of um, a mechanism to identify whether or not the request has uh, an authorized or an unauthorized user. And this uses Amazon Cognito under the hood, so you kind of have to enable this first. So I'm going to go ahead and enable a basic version of Cognito. Don't worry though, um, the user does not have to be signed in to use this. We're just going to use this because we're going to be using IAM privileges that are going to be enabled uh, via the Cognito identity pool that will all be kind of work uh, worked up for you by the Amplify CLI and the Amplify client libraries. So I'm just going to kind of take the defaults. doesn't really matter there, honestly. Uh, next, we're going to give a project-friendly name for our actual storage. So this is going to be kind of your local resource name. So I might call this image bucket S3 or something like that. This doesn't really have to be unique. This can be whatever you'd like it to be. But the actual bucket name does need to be globally unique, meaning that um, it needs to be uh, unique across every AWS account. So I kind of like to go with the um, bucket that's given to me, or you can come up with something uh, truly unique, but it usually gives you a UUID that works pretty well. Now we can choose uh, whether or not we want to have public and private access. Because we're not going to be working with any authentication here, I want to allow public access, meaning I'm going to give it access uh, using auth and guest users. Now, you might want to kind of give authenticated users um, some ability to update and delete their own you know, um, files. So let's say that we want to enable that later on. To do that, we can go ahead and just allow all permissions for create, read, update, and delete for authenticated users. Um, and this way, when a user is signed in, you can kind of assign items within a bucket to them and only give them access to update and stuff. But what we're going to be working with is guest users. And what I would like to do is I'm going to let guest users uh, create and read, but we're not going to let any guest users delete. Um, this way, people can upload stuff, but they can't delete uh, other people's stuff. And then do I want a Lambda trigger? I'm going to choose no, and we're ready to go. So now that our storage is all set up, we can now run Amplify Push, and this is going to deploy the services for us. So this is going to deploy both the um, S3 bucket as well as the authentication stuff that we need wired up in order for us to be able to upload images from our client side application. So now that we have that deploying, let's go ahead and open up the code in our text editor. And what we're going to do here is um, write some code to enable us to use Amplify client libraries to first upload an image. And then we're going to look at how to actually download an image. 
So to um, configure our React application, the first thing we need to do is open index.js. And what we want to do is configure Amplify. So to do that, I can import Amplify from AWS Amplify. That's the library that we installed at first. We're going to import the AWS exports that's created for us by the CLI. And then we're going to call amplify.configure passing in the config. And this configures our project, and now we're ready to go. And we can go ahead and open app.js. And this is going to be where most of our code lives. Now, um, in order for us to use local state, we're going to go ahead and import uh, some hooks from React. So I'll go ahead and import use state and use effect. And then I'm going to go ahead and import the um, storage API from AWS Amplify. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is like have an export default function app. And then um, for the return, we might just return like a div with an H1 that says storage example. Now, what we're going to need to work with is, um, first of all, we need to have a function that allows us to upload an image. So to do that, um, we're going to need to have a function for um, you know, uploading an image. So we might say, um, actually, we can attach this function to the, the file input handler. So when someone does upload an image, it automatically uploads. Or when someone you know, sets an image, it automatically uploads. So let's have an on change function. And we might make this like async because we might want to work with um, an async function. And then what we're going to also need to do is let's go ahead and create an images array and a set images function. And we're going to set this to an empty array. This is going to be so when, um, when we load our app after we've uploaded some images, we'll go ahead and fetch the images, and then we'll set them here. So in use state, I'm sorry, in use effect, let's have a function that we invoke here called fetch images. And then we'll go ahead and create that function here. And when the app loads, we want to go ahead and fetch the images that we've saved. And then maybe after we upload a new image, we might also want to invoke it here. Um, and then we might want to like map over the images. So we might say images.map. And we might just have an image with the source set to the image and the key set to the image since it's probably going to be unique. Um, and then maybe some styling. with some width and height and margin bottom. Maybe I'll bump this down to 300 and 200. So the idea here is we're going to have uh, an images array that we want to be able to kind of um, work with. Now, we also need a way for people to upload a new image. So to do that, I'm going to have like an input. The type needs to be a uh, file. And then we're just going to attach this on change handler to the on change. And then for the actual on change handler, what we're going to now do is in the on change handler, we should have an event that comes through. And then we can say we want to get the event.target.files um, zero, uh, zero with item, so the very first item in that array. And then we're going to then call storage.put. And storage.put allows us to pass in the file uh, name itself, the file, as well as the content type. Now, in our case, we might, let's just say we want to have a generic input. So we want to allow people to upload uh, PNG files. We want to allow them to upload pretty much anything, right? Like um, JPG or whatever. And, um, and then maybe we'll just console.log the results just to kind of see what it looks like. So now when we, um, when we use our input and we upload a file, it should go ahead and save it to S3. Now the last thing we want to do is we want to call storage.list. 
and fetch images. And this is going to go ahead and list all of the images that we have uh, in our S3 bucket. And the way that, do that, that we do that is we just pass in an empty file path. Because when we're uploading images, we can upload these to different file paths. So let's say I had a file path of like slash avatars. I could fetch those avatars in this way. But in this case, I want to kind of get everything out of the bucket. To do that, we're just going to pass in an empty string. Now, the keys that we're going to get here are actually going to be only the the uh, key that we're passing in is the name. So essentially the S3 bucket is gonna have all of these keys which are gonna be the name, but for secure access, we actually need to sign each one of those and give it a temporarily signed URL that allows us to actually render that in our app. And the way that we're gonna do that is like you need to call storage.get passing in the key, but since we're gonna be working with an array, let's map over all of the images um, image keys. So we're going to say image keys dot map. And then we're going to kind of make this a promise and we're going to await. And we're going to say for each item in this array, we want to call storage dot get. We're passing in the key. And then we just want to return the signed version of the key, which is going to be returned here. And we might say like signed URL just to kind of make this a little bit more apparent. Whoops. And then we say we want to um, get the signed you know url for every item and then we want to return that and then what image keys should be at this point is an array of signed urls and at this point um we can now you know update our local state with those images so i believe that's that's all we're going to need to kind of get this working maybe we'll uh, log out the image keys just to kind of give you an idea of what this looks like and maybe we'll log it out um, before and after we get them signed. So that should that should work. So let's go back to our terminal and see if our uh, backend has been uh, uploaded and it has. So I should be able to run npm start. And go to localhost 3000 and we should be able to go ahead and test this out. All right, so if we look in our, our console, we see that we have those image keys um, logged out and it's an empty array. So let's now go ahead and upload an image. And now we see when um, the image uploads, that we see the image showing up because once the um, image has been uploaded, we call fetch images again. And then if we look at the, um, the different things that we have logged out here, the original image coming back from the call to S3 has all these different um, items on it. So we have the key, we have the size, we have the last modified and things like that. But what we are interested in is this signed URL, which is really long. So if I hover over it, you see actually how long that is. Um, and we kind of get that by mapping over um, every item in the array, getting a signed version of that. And another way that you might use this is if you just need a single item from uh, S3, you would just call storage.get on that single item, right? You would just have a key and you would be able to go and just fetch that individual key. But if we refresh, we should see that, um, you know, we still have that there. And if I go ahead and try to upload um, another image here, then we see that both of the images are there. And then if I refresh, uh, everything is working. So um, that's kind of it. That's all I wanted to go over today in this video. I hope you learned a little bit. Um, this is a pretty basic video. I hope you enjoyed it though. Um, if you're interested in more of this stuff, I uh, will really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel. And until then, I will see you next time.